In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you exactly how to use keyframes in iMovie. Now the reason I'm making this video is because in my last video, I was asked about this transition that I did right here. The exact comment was, I'd love to know how you did the fade in of the small video to larger at the end there when you stopped sharing your screen. But that specific comment made by this person made me think of making this video so that one, I can not only show them how I made that transition, but how I can show everyone how to do that transition with iMovie. So on that note, let's dive into iMovie and get to it. Here we are in iMovie. Now when it comes to keyframes, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is have two different clips. But before I even jump into that, you should probably know exactly what a keyframe is. A keyframe is essentially an animation that you make within your movie that is gonna allow for much more movement to a very specific element in your videos. That's basically all the keyframe does. The keyframe allows you to add some sort of movement to something that you want to move in your video. So for example, if you have a static camera and you wanted to make it look like there was a panning motion, you can add keyframes to make the video look like it's moving from left to right. Or in this case where it made me think of making this video to begin with, you can make something go from smaller to larger in just a few seconds. So now that we have an understanding of what a keyframe is, we can really dive into iMovie and I can show you exactly how to add these keyframes so that you have that simulated movement and animation in your videos. So the first thing you're gonna wanna have is two clips. These are the two clips I had in my last video. I'm not gonna worry about syncing the audio just because that's gonna take a little extra step. So this is purely gonna be about keyframes and I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to add that movement. So make sure you have two clips. One of these clips is gonna have to be on top of the other. So we're gonna drag the first clip that I want to remain big for the entire video on the bottom of my main timeline. And I'm gonna bring the clip that I want to be in the picture in picture on top of this clip. So I'm gonna drag that on top of this clip. And let's zoom in just so we have a better idea of what it looks like. Scroll all the way over, okay. So let me mute these audios. All right, so now as you can see, we have the top clip is obviously gonna cover the bottom clip. And this is just simply because that clip is on top. But because we want that picture in picture, we're gonna wanna make this top clip appear as if it's in the bottom corner of the bottom clip. So initially to do this, you're gonna wanna make sure the top clip is highlighted. You're gonna come over here to overlay effects, click on overlay effects, and you see cutaway. You click on cutaway, you wanna click on picture in picture. This is gonna allow you to drag this clip anywhere you want on the bottom clip. So, we have this, we want it in the bottom corner, so we're gonna place it in the bottom corner. Now you can resize it however you want within picture in picture. We're gonna make it about that size. I like that and you can use these yellow guidelines as guidelines because that's what they're there for. So I'm gonna make sure it's perfectly in the corner. Leave it there. All right, now you have that smaller screen. Say you wanted to start with the top clip full screen and then shrink it down to the bottom corner. This is gonna be a, your first example of what you can do with a keyframe. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start completely over really. So I'm gonna come over to my overlay settings, click on cutaway, just so we have that beginning part. We're gonna make sure we're at the beginning of our clip and we're gonna come back to our overlay settings, come back to picture in picture. And what we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this clip is full screen. So we're gonna to, going to wanna to resize it to make sure that it fits the entire top screen. Move it around, make sure it's fit exactly how we want it. Now, to start using keyframes, you're gonna to have to wanna to come to this little symbol over here in the corner, and you click on the plus sign. Now, wherever your playhead is, that is where your first keyframe is gonna be. So that is where the motion is gonna start. So we're gonna click add new keyframe. We have our first keyframe right there. 
and wherever you want the movement to stop, you're gonna have to wanna scrub all the way to that point. So we're only gonna scrub for a couple seconds and we're gonna come right here. Come right here, click on this part, make sure the playhead is right there. Make sure you're on overlay settings. And when you know this is where you want your keyframe to stop, you need to come back to the keyframe button, click add keyframe again, and then all you have to do is resize your picture to exactly where you want it to be. So remember, we want it to be in the bottom corner. We resize it how we want. And there you go. The rest of the clip is gonna stay exactly right there in the bottom of the screen until we add another keyframe. So if we come back and look at how the video looks from here, we're gonna press play. And as you can see, it's a very slow movement because of how long we put the playhead for the end of our movement. But as you can see, it is slowly moving and this is exactly what a keyframe does. It's simulating that movement so that top clip is shrinking and since we are past that moment where the keyframe ends, the clip wherever we stop that keyframe, that is where the clip is going to remain until we add another keyframe or change something else about the video. Now the statement that led to this video was how I went from the smaller screen to the bigger screen at the end of the video. So let's scroll to the end of our timeline and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. So because we're gonna have this at the end of the video and I'm not actually using this video, this is just purely for example, I'm gonna split the excess footage that I have, so split the clip there and all right, then the rest of it is gone. So we have our clip right here and we want it to be a few seconds. As you can see, this is where we want to start the movement. So just like you did at the beginning of the video, you need to do the same thing at the end of the video. So what you do, you come back to your overlay settings and you want to click on the keyframe button again right here. You're going to click on the keyframe button that is going to start the movement again. So the beginning of your keyframe movement is gonna be when you first click on the keyframe button. And I want the end of this clip to be full screen. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure I'm at the end of my clip and make sure that I go back to overlay settings, picture in picture, that's not exactly quite there. Boom, picture in picture, make sure the clip is highlighted and we come to our keyframe button again. So we're gonna need to add another keyframe to the very end of this clip. So we click on add keyframe. Now what we need to do, we need to drag this clip to the size that we want it to be. Because I want it to be full screen, I'm gonna drag it to be full screen. So just drag it, make sure it's full screen. It looks full screen and we should be good with that movement. So let's see how it looks. Play it out. And the movement should be starting now. There we go. The movement is starting now. And as you can see, the screen is starting to get bigger. The picture that we wanted to get bigger is getting bigger because of the keyframes that we use. And there you go. In iMovie, that is how you use keyframes to simply make something go from smaller to bigger or bigger to smaller. But because I'm generous, I'm gonna show you how to do that fake movement from left to right in iMovie as well using keyframes. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come, we're gonna come to the very beginning of our video again. And you know what? We are gonna eliminate the previous keyframes that we added. So what I wanna do, come to the overlay settings, come to that, get rid of that keyframe, get rid of that keyframe. Just get rid of every single keyframe and come back to the beginning of our video. Now, what we're gonna wanna do, this is where I want the movement to start. So it's gonna be simple enough. And this is gonna be a key note to remember. When you wanna add the simulated movement from a left to right or top to bottom, whatever type of movement you really have within a specific scene, Filming in 4K is gonna be something that you might wanna consider because when you film in 4K, you're not gonna lose any quality when you zoom in. And this type of movement that you're gonna have and that you're gonna see 
requires you to zoom in at least a little bit within your frame. So again, we're gonna wanna come to overlay settings, make sure that the clip we wanna make this movement on is highlighted, make sure that we are in picture in picture, and then when you're in picture in picture, all you're gonna wanna do, make sure you add a keyframe, but make sure you have the clip zoomed in exactly where you want it to be. You're gonna wanna zoom it in because you want the entire scene to fill up the screen. This can sometimes be a little bit of a hassle, but we're gonna make sure we have our screen filled up. And it's not gonna be a lot of movement, but as you can see, I'm zoomed in with the keyframe added, and most of my head is on the left side of the screen. Now we're gonna come to a little bit further along and add another keyframe. So we're gonna come back to our overlay settings and we're gonna click on the keyframe button again. And when we're gonna do this, we click on that and we're gonna move it to the opposite direction to the opposite side of the screen just so we can have that simulated movement that we're looking for. And that is very simple. That's all you need to do when it comes to adding this movement. So let's see how it looks. Let's press play and movement should be starting soon. There it is. And when you hit that point where you added your second keyframe, that is where the movement is gonna stop. Now keyframes, there's really not that much to them. You just need to be very precise with exactly where you add them on your timeline. But other than that, having keyframes is gonna be something that's really gonna add that little extra bit of dynamic movement that you might need in your videos to keep your audience engaged. And it's really gonna take your videos to that next level. So if this was a video that you found to be very helpful, if this was a video that you found to be very informative, if this is something that you know that you can use in your videos when it comes to using iMovie, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And something else that I would love for you to do just comment how much you love this video. That, that's, that's all I want you to do. Just a, a quick comment, a quick little emoji, a quick thumbs up emoji, any, anything like that, I'd appreciate. So, until the next video, I'm Steven from Dare to Capture. Catch you in the next one. Peace.